And we're at chapter 13, verse 17 of Numbers, and we are going to be reading about something very, very bad that the people of Israel did. I'll just get right to it. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people who dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. Notes. And that would seem that Moses was guilty here of at least some indiscretion in the giving of these directions. Now, irrespective as to the condition of the people, whether weak or strong, we must remember it was God who gave them, uh, basically, these instructions. He, he basically said, go and take the land, basically. But no, they had to conduct a feasibility study, and, well, God doesn't like it whenever we question his direct words, as we shall see. Verse 19. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now was, now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin. Notes. This is the extreme uh, southern boundary of the promised land. Uh, uh, scripture. Unto Rehob as the men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Notes. Now these very well could have been giants... Uh, basically the result of cohabitation between fallen angels and women of Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. And this was Satan's plan very clearly to pollute the human race through which Jesus would have to come, that is, if man was to be delivered. In other words, they were trying to corrupt the seed line, so to speak. Scripture. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Notes. In other words, this is one of the oldest cities in the world. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it between two upon a staff. Notes. In other words, these were unusually large cluster, uh, an unusually large cluster of grapes. Scripture. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the Brook Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes with the children of Israel cut down from mints. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. Notes. Now, forty is God's probationary number in the Bible. Uh, regrettably, as Adam and Eve, they failed that probation. Although not stated in the Bible, most probably Adam and Eve walked with the Lord some forty days before the fall. Verse 26. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where you sent us and surely it flows with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. Notes. This should have been a warning to these people. In other words, it was exactly as the Lord said it would be. That should have been a grand admonishment, but we shall see. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong who dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Notes. Now, the evil report, which was faithlessness, was given by the ten of the spies and had greatly unsettled the people. Ah, boy, if they only knew what it would cost them. And here comes Caleb, who seemingly interrupts this. This was the language of faith coming straight from Caleb's mouth. Let us go over there. Let's just show them how big we can whip them. 
but faith and truth are never quite popular. Had they only believed and acted upon faith, they were in fact well able to overcome it because the Lord was with them. But whenever faithlessness came out, so did the Lord. He simply departed. Verse 31. But the men who went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Uh, notes. Now, duh, 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 duh. What do we have here on our side? We have the God. We have the creator of the universe. But yet we're not able to do this. What nonsense. <laughs> However, doubt and unbelief, they always look to self and say, We cannot. Well, that's where we need to look at the Lord and say, because of Him, we can. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had scattered under the children of Israel. Notes. Basically, to deny the word of God is always constituted, uh, or it always constituted an evil report. Scripture. Now, where was I? Now, they were saying, the land through which we have gone to search it. It is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in there are, uh, they are men of great stature. Notes, here we have more doubt and unbelief, and they see the difficulties, while this man Caleb sees faith, and he sees victory. Verse 33, And there we saw the giants, the, son of, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Notes. Now think about this. As a believer, what do you see? Do you see giants? Or do you see God? Do you see grasshoppers? Or do you see God's greatness? Do you want to live? Or do you want to die? Choose God if you want to live. Chapter 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Notes. Now, pretty obviously, they're crying because of unbelief. How stupid. They have the God of the universe very clearly on their side, and yet they're afraid of a little flesh. Verse 2. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness? Notes. They are going to, for the most part, they are going to get exactly what they've said. As a matter of fact, you may as well go ahead and circle these first two verses in chapter 14 of the book of Numbers, because that's exactly what they're going to get. I mean, faith can actually work in the negative, and sometimes God sees to that. <laughs> Verse 3, <laughs> And wherefore has the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be as prey? Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? Notes. Now, uh, our God is basically now being blamed, whereas there, before they had only blamed Moses and Aaron, so now they're really getting out of control. Verse 4, and they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Notes. Nothing less than an entire and deliberate revolt was involved in the wish to elect a captain for themselves. Well, basically because the Lord was the captain of the host. I mean, they, they're they pretty much saying they're going to boot him out and put a human in. This was basically a proposal to depose him and to choose another in his place. And this marked the extremity of their unbelief and the ingratitude of all of these people. They're knuckleheads for doing this. Verse 5. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Notes. This was not so much to make intercession for them, but mostly because of the enormity of their sin and what Moses and Aaron knew would follow. They knew that judgment was coming very, very quickly. We'll have to pick up in chapter 14 of the book of Numbers, verse 6. Thank you, and God bless.